Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rajni, like the host just introduced. Um, today, we're going to be doing a discussion on um, the impact of Gen Z on brand building. Um, do we have a lot of Gen Zs here? Um, I think I see some. Maybe you all can wave out, show your enthusiasm a little bit, um, because that's what we're going to be talking about today, right? Um, about how you all are impacting uh, brands who've been here for so many years, and uh, they have to change their marketing strategies to sort of, you know, reach out to you, make sure you consume their products, buy their products, etc. So yay for all the Gen Z in the room, guys. Okay. Um, of what we know as Gen Zs, we are all digitally native, right? Uh, we've grown up with internet in our lives. Um, we, we adapt very, very quickly to technology. And um, if we can sense an influencer collaboration from like miles away, um, if someone is trying to sell us something, we're just like, please, guys, stop it. I know you're trying to sell me stuff, right? Um, marketing to an audience like that who's so aware is, is quite a bit of challenge, especially for, you know, brands who've been here for years and they are all learning newer ways to sort of uh, reach y'all and understand the audience better. So today, that's what we're going to do with the panel here. Um, they're going to break down um, what they see all as, you know, consumers. Um, what are the challenges we face in uh, sort of marketing to Gen Z audiences? And then what are the good parts about doing all of it together, right? Um, I'm going to open with Pradnya. Um, I think let's delve a little bit in understanding Gen Z first. So how does Gen Z differ from, you know, millennials, boomers, all of us sitting on the stage um, in terms of values and priorities? And um, how do you think that affects their purchasing decisions? So I would like to call out the three things mainly in the Gen Z. One, that they are digital natives, right? So they are much ahead and they are more savvy uh, than our millennials. Number two is, I think they are silent generation because uh, they are discovering, learning, revalidating, and uh, being on a social platform, online platform so much that they are making judgments also. So, uh, you know, uh, therefore, whatever you have to really understand what they are up to to really make a difference and uh, start having an impact. And the third thing is uh, they, they, they just don't have patience, you know. I mean, I search on the internet that what is their attention span, and the last study was 2015, which is eight seconds. But I don't think it's eight seconds. It's just a split of a second, you know. So it's a really uh, challenging stuff. And uh, eight seconds is what Meta is trying to sell to you. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing is, uh, like, Gen Zs are from, like, 12 years to 27 years, right? And, like, 12 to 14 will behave differently from 14 to 16 and 16 to 18. So there are so many cohorts within that Gen Z. So uh, it's like uh, you have to have a different strategy. Like, just for an example, for Samsonite, we, uh, it, it, it would be mainly 24 plus, you know, and therefore, uh, what is it that uh, we are doing is basically Gen Z is all about authenticity. So we are taking the root of like uh, tell uh, what you actually mean, you know, walk the talk, you know, and we are taking this realistic approach and our authenticity to show what we are. While uh, for the American tourist, like from actually we have a primary age group also. So we are uh, doing a lot of stuff, which is at the last mile, you know, how we can make a difference. Simple like, you know, a 12 year kid can get to know, scan a QR code and see, check what they can pack in a bag, you know. Uh, for a 20 year old, uh, especially those who are looking for going abroad, we have a different type of a content and the uh, products introduced so that it really, uh, you know, they can pack more like a volume is the, their best con, uh, concern. And that is what we are providing them. And all that communication is provided to them between July till December so that they can reach out to. So uh, there are like thousand ways, you know, and we are doing a lot of, it's, it's never enough. But yeah, we are trying to put in our efforts in each uh, 
uh, each way to ha have an impact and gain their mind space. Super. That, that's good to know. Um, in fact, purchasing decisions of uh, Gen Z is something, you know, it's very, very difficult to predict. So it's good that you're trying multiple things. Um, that's how we get it. Um, my next question is for Sanjana. <clears throat> Uh, what are some common misconceptions, you know, about Gen Z that brands should avoid? We've seen a lot of examples of force-fitting Gen Z into this certain typecasted audience. Uh, what are those misconceptions, if you can highlight some? Uh, thanks for the question, uh, Rajni. Um, so I think uh, a lot of us believe, or a lot of brands even believe, that Gen Z has this fleeting attention, like we just spoke about. Even in terms of, let's say, sticking loyal to a brand uh, as such. Um, I've found that to be not true. I think if you are being authentic, <clears throat> right, like was just uh, mentioned, if you're being more authentic, more real, uh, walking the talk, uh, like she mentioned, uh, and on top of that, if you're providing them the right value, they're just very value conscious. They're constantly uh, seeing and evaluating your brand that if you're giving them their money's worth or they'll definitely switch. Um, right? How we try to go about that uh, at Traya uh, is essentially that it's not just that, okay, we made a sale to you of a hair treatment plan and then, okay, you're on your own. Uh, we are providing a lot of value in terms of free follow-up consultations. Is there a doctor intervention needed at some stage if they are not seeing results uh, with the brand, right? And all these are additional uh, complementary services that we try to uh, provide to keep this audience uh, hooked to us. Um, I'll agree that they are still low on, um, let's say, patience. Like someone who's a 35 plus 40 year old customers that we'll have, um, if you tell them you have to take this treatment for eight months, 10 months, they'll do it, right? They'll just stick to it. Gen Z will need like a lot more hand holding and support and constant reassurance that this will work, constant motivation that this will work. You know, why don't you just stick to it for another month and <clears throat> you'll see the positive outcomes uh, for yourself. So I think it's just about providing value and being real uh, with them so, and they'll definitely be loyal yeah, as well. That's, that's quite right because I think very recently I heard that boomers had a lot more income uh, at the age that Gen Z are right now in terms of disposable. So definitely they need to be value conscious about everything. And I think Gen Z also has a lot more options available, right? Which um, we didn't or boomers didn't have in, in their times. So great. Thank you, uh, Sanjana. Um, next one for you, Tushar. Um, how is Gen Z shaping expectations for brand communications? You know, um, like for a brand like Bisleri, who's been around for so long, how do you align yourself to a newer audience, to newer messaging, and sort of attract and reel them in? So, um, I mean, uh, I've kind of lost my voice because I was at Lola Poloza last week. So I'll try to <laughs> make myself heard. So yes, did, did what the Gen Z's do, right? Uh, but uh, for any brand today, you know, especially a legacy brand, there is a transformation of the brand which happens between generations. And it's important that you understand the next generation as a brand as well. Uh, one of the things about Gen Z's and the role of water is what we've kind of researched with them is what does, what does hydration mean to Gen Z, right? And they would ask a question, like, what do you do to keep healthy? So they said two things. Uh, we exercise and we have water, right? So hydration is a very, very important point. It's beyond the functionality of water just to quench your thirst. It's, it's a way of life. It's about staying fit. And that's when our journey began with sports marketing, uh, you know, a couple of years back, where we associated first with uh, the ProCam marathons, right? And then we launched this campaign called Carry Your Game, where we uh, had uh, four award-winning national athletes on board, and we made a DVC, right? Very high octane, talking about what, what the role of water is in a sports person life. And since then, we forged many sports associations. We have uh, four IPL teams as hydration partners. We have five ISL teams. We did the national games. Uh, we did table tennis. We did Commonwealth. Now we've just done Dubai Marathon as well, and we've got uh, five teams in the Dubai IL T20 as well. So we are changing the role of water to something which enables uh, peak performance, fitness, health. And in the post-pandemic world, that's a concern with everybody, not, not just Gen Zs, right? And we've taken that mantle and uh, there is a lot of exciting stuff coming from us. 
Now we went a step further. We are saying that, you know, um, how do we make everyday hydration fun? And that's when we brought Deepika Padukone on board as uh, a brand ambassador, right? She is the global uh, youth icon today, right? And who better to spread the message that hydration is fun, hydration is cool, water is the OG, OG beverage, right? You don't need anything else. Um, and we got this fantastic video which was uh, shot by Prakash Verma as well. So um, we are going um, all about Gen Z as far as brand communication is concerned, right? And uh, we're getting really good response as well. All our online metrics have got a 98, 99% approval metrics as well. So I think for a brand to be future ready, you have to also talk to the consumer of the future. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. I think um, what I took away from that is more of aligning with where your uh, audience lies in their interests, like in sports, in, in finding the right key KOL um, and sort of getting there to meet them is, is how to attract Gen Z. Great. I think uh, for Charuta and uh, Ravi, open question. Um, Gen Z is an important audience, right, for both uh, cosmetics, L'Oreal Paris in general, and for Tim Hortons, considering the hottest international brand in India, right? Um, what are your biggest challenges in reaching Gen Z? Considering you all are a brand that's already Gen Z friendly, but how do you sort of, what are the challenges that you face? If you can highlight that for us. I think the biggest challenge is learning the language and the slang. <laughs> but uh, jokes apart, um, I think this is a generation that's uh, grown up on a lot of awareness and a lot of uh, acceptance. So I think uh, uh, these two factors present both a challenge and an opportunity. Uh, why I say awareness is because the world is connected. They are ahead of beauty trends even before we can, you know, tap into them. They know the 20-step Korean uh, skin regime uh, before we launch any products uh, in, in that zone. Um, so it's, it's, it's for, they constantly keep us on our toes and uh, we have to reinvent uh, in terms of innovations, the new products that we get into market, the claims that we have on our products, which influencers are we collaborating with, um, how digital first are we? And um, I think our entire strategy then is revolving around that because while this uh, generation is just coming into adulthood, uh, it's very critical for us uh, to portray them and keep them at the forefront of as our core brand TG when we design communication. That's one. The second thing is about acceptance, right? Uh, because um, uh, it's, it's a woke generation. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of cohorts within the generation. Um, so you will have extremely opposite um, uh, cohorts and both coexisting, right? So people who have maybe never read books to those who are complete geeks um, and, and, you know, all, all the different types. So you have, you have to cater to the vegans, you have to cater to gluten-free, um, uh, you know, requirements and maybe even more so for you. Uh, but um, how do you, the challenge and the opportunity is how do you keep abreast of all these new trends, uh, have your products integrated and have those claims on packs, build your cred as a brand. Uh, but at the same time, through the use of digital marketing, you can very much sharpshoot these different cohorts. And I think that's, that's a beautiful opportunity for us. And we, we do that uh, at L'Oreal. Yeah, yeah uh, I'll just add to what Charuta said here, right? It's, uh, so, you know, we, when, when we all talk about what is our TG and, you know, for a brand like Tim Hortons, right, when we define in a typical marketing manner, right, it's, Oh, 18 to 35, urban audience, you know, uh, upper NCCS, and, and that's the general demographic that one speaks, right? And like Charuta said, right, within this 18 to 35 also, there are a lot of sub-TGs, and, you know, one of them is Gen Z, a higher TG or, you know, higher consumption cohort is still millennials. But, uh, you know, even in today's day, you know, there was, there was a time when we used to say that coffee starts maybe at 24, 25, your, you know, your teeth will get black or or we are a tea drinking nation by large. But now, I mean, you know, I see in my cafes all the time, even 12, 13 years old are having a frappuccino and black coffees and, you know, that's how the habit has changed. And I think the challenge and opportunity lies, uh, you know, in this single statement that they are brutally honest and authentic. You, you can't, you know, as a brand, you can't bluff around them. And let me give an example, right? Uh, in our cafe, we generally do a very quick and dirty test with our consumers, right? When we're coming with a new product, we just go around sampling it and we take a response. And uh, my brand manager was doing that and, you know, I was sitting there and observing uh, what responses are coming and there's this group of millennials who were 
you know who and the, the drink was popcorn latte so we were trying something different we wanted to come out with a winter offering and there is a, a coffee with a popcorn on it and uh, there is this millennial cohort who said yeah you know it's good and uh, but i would still prefer my latte and cappuccino or hazelnut americano or what not right and then there is this group of young uh, you know maybe 13 14 years old and and we went to them and they were like i don't like it what is this i don't know. i don't want popcorn in my coffee man give me a coffee so you know they are, they are brutally honest and and that what uh, pushes the boundary to the brand as well that you can't you know uh, there were days where things were brushed under the carpet if i can say that but you can't do that anymore you know all this habit of uh, the front back of the pack coming at the front of the pack reading every label being conscious about every calories that they are having every uh, every interactions that they are having uh, that has to be like brutally honest uh you know let me give one more example right uh, we we speak about sustainability and gen z is a very sustainable and everything right from the product to the packaging to the experience and we get enough queries on our instagram always that hey but is your economy whole circular what is the carbon footprint that you have recovered what is you know okay your cups are paper but what about the straws right and and they are observing all this and and that really pushes the boundary to the brand to go more authentic you know more truthful in our in our communication in all our approach so i think that's both a challenge because you know overall the industry has not evolved to that stage as yet uh, unfortunately in india but there are ways in which uh, you know, all the brands are working towards but it's also a great opportunity because going ahead uh, the products the brands the services will get much more truthful much more honest in their offering and i see that as a huge opportunity lying ahead of us i think uh, gen z is really pushing brands to do better and i think that's a wonderful thing for our world uh, in general at least for the generation that's coming ahead <clears throat> right uh, we'll quickly move on to um, sort of understanding now what are some effective ways that you all have seen uh, you know uh, opportunities or things that you all have done to attract gen z and how that's worked so pradnya sanjana if you all can add on a little bit on this on some effective strategies that you all have used from your business lens because i think both of you all come from very different backgrounds so the first and foremost would be uh, social media and uh, mainly the instagram uh, which we have used really well for the gen z's and all about social media is all about two way communication and we trying to be true to that uh, having many 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 interactive formats Uh, so that uh, there is a lot of interaction engagement with the gen z the second thing is uh, you know using the creators to do uh, generate the content because uh, anyways the gen z's are from the creator economy and uh, who best to entertain them if not the creators itself you know themselves so we use lot of uh, these creators to have the smaller form of content and the third thing is uh, tech you know uh, we are still work in progress we have not used it to the fullest we are not yet experimenting ar vr because that's require a good amount of capex but uh, smaller tech like you know uh, the interactive platforms the filters the uh, the, the remixing on instagram right now we are talking about the sensory tech you know so all these platforms we are surely exploring so that we give them the better experience uh, of the communication than just uh, a piece of uh, you know 10 second communication yeah uh, so quite an interesting one this one for me have built a lot of learnings on this lately right there's enough been emphasized about how this generation is very aware right now what that leads to is that they question every communication okay um i have so many gen z customers and even beyond who will question testimonials because they're like every brand has these uh, on their website now right uh, these are shot by you okay so then we said fine uh, we stopped shooting them in a studio we said we asked our customers to you know send them send us their videos self recorded on their phone in their natural home backgrounds tried those they said no it's still you can hire anybody to do that right then we started talking more about google reviews that okay this is not now our testimonials right but now they also question that that it's not so tough to plant fake reviews um, by your own team on google right so now we are having to take steps beyond that 
like doing clinical studies with third party authorities that are that listen here is our customer base you do a study on how much results they have seen what not what's the efficacy like and you publish it on your portal so we are, we are having to really evolve in terms of just making them believe that this works especially in an industry like hair loss because people have tried everything before they come to Thraya. They have gone to a dermat, they have tried homopathy, they have tried mummy ke nuske, right? They've gone to everything and even anti-hair fall shampoo, hair oil and nothing has worked. So now this is not a generation that fall into the trap of claims like, uh, okay, within seven washes, your hair fall will reduce by 80%. So it's also the fact that I, I feel we are refreshingly honest at Traya in terms of saying panch mahina lagega. You have to stick to this routine. It is going to be tough. You will need the patience, but this is the only uh, way to kind of go about it. Um, talking beyond that, I think with Gen Z, it's also experimenting with a lot of ad formats, like going beyond a face to camera it's not enough to grab their attention for long, especially when you have long format explainer videos about a treatment-like solution, right? Uh, so what we realized is that things like podcasts work really well for us. You'll see our founder herself going to so many podcasts, you know, beer biceps, run be those are the kind of things that work. And not, you know, doctor explainer videos who are talking in a monologue with a... So, so it's a lot of formats and then the finer details. I think it's with them, it's not enough anymore to just focus on the right media and engaging content. It's so much in the finer details, like the thumbnail design for your video, having clickbaity copies on the headline and description. Um, look at brands experimenting and getting so creative with just emojis in the push notifications you guys get on your phone now, because in, insane results in terms of spiking your CTRs, right? So it's a lot in the finer details, like the hashtags also you're using uh, for YouTube SEO and stuff like that. So yeah, so we, I, I think um, we try to inculcate a culture of a lot of creative experimentation at Traya and even A-B test creatives in this audience to see that what works and what doesn't. I think. All the Gen Z's here, y'all are really making the brands work hard. <laughs> this is like really tough. A-B testing creatives and copies is like the most excruciating task for an agency. Trust me. Uh, great. Um, moving on uh, to Tushar. Uh, can you highlight some emerging trends, tech that you see, uh, you know, that brands are connecting with, uh, you know, especially with data, personalization, everything that you're seeing, expecting, they're expecting even more of that to happen. Um, any of that you could highlight for us? I mean, when you think about water, the first thing which comes to your mind is distribution. Oh my God, it's going to be so bulky. How are we going to, you know, transport it around? And uh, one of the things that if you look at Gen Z's today, everything is online. Everything is required at the click of a button. Everything is required yesterday, right? Now, how do we address that as a brand and as a water brand, right? So uh, we started our journey with our own uh, D2C app uh, during uh, COVID, in fact, uh, where water became an essential requirement for everybody. It's called Bisleri at the doorstep. But when we delved deeper into the lives of Gen Z and what it was all about, and we came, came across with a campaign called Ab Bisleri Apne App Aiga, where uh, a Gen Z's pet, a cat, actually, it's so easy to order water online. Right? And that business for us has grown manifold year after year after year. It's really taken off and that's where most of our um, gallon or 20 liter jar, a lot of our sales uh, have shifted off to where a lot of Gen Z's are ordering that. The second um, growth lever for us when it comes to this online space is uh, quick commerce. So when you look at the Blinkwits, the Instamarts and Zeptos of the world, right? That's where a lot of our smaller packs are going for in-home consumption at parties and and uh, the digitalization trend for a category like water, almost uh, three to four percent of our overall volumes have now transferred digital for a category like water. So um, <clears throat> when you look at um, the other trends when it comes to tech and Gen Z's, of course, um, uh, digital is where uh, Gen Z's are today, connected TVs on the mobile phones. So you will see a lot of shift of media expenditure also happening over to uh, digital uh, bit and but what, what will also happen is that for especially for an FMCG mass brand 
it has to be an integrated campaign. A campaign cannot just run on one channel. The same message has to go now on TV. For your consumption audience, you know, 30 years old, 40 years old, especially if you look at Mass Bharat, right? That's where your uh, TV is there. But Gen Z Connect, it is digital. There is a lot of experiential play which is also going on today with events coming on to four, everybody's out on the street. So one campaign has to have multiple legs which run across different media vehicles, right? It's just not a question of being present in one media vehicle today. That's, that's great. Um, would any of you would like to add on to this question in terms of trend tech? I think it's a relevant question for all brands nowadays. Yeah, just building on to uh, what's been discussed, I think um, it's, it's about integrated media and integrated communication. So even the pieces of communication that we design, uh, and I have seen this in my last 15 years, how things have changed from a 40 second one ad that we, we would make, you know, a 40 or 35 or 30 at best, yeah. we, we'd end it there. Now, I mean, 30 seconds are something that we don't even think of, even on TV, you know, because it's just that nobody has that kind of mind space. Um, uh, so it's getting shorter and shorter uh, in terms of the average commercial duration as we speak. And the messaging also is much, much more, uh, you know, mass personalized. So uh, there is a recent campaign that uh, we have done on hair color, on L'Oreal Paris hair color called My Hair Color, My Expression, uh, uh, with four digital stars, um, Kirti Kulhari, Bani J. Yeah, with the um, FOMO shots, please. Yes, cast, yes, yeah. yes. And um, the, the content that we have created with them is not just uh, the basic TVC, IMC, but even their individual stories on hair coloration, their authentic stories on what is their relationship. And for some, for somebody like a Kirti, she's always been very, very experimentative with her hair. But for, for somebody like a Shayoni, she never colored her hair before the shoot. So. Uh, we then use that communication, we create edits to, to tap into those cohorts of people who, people who buy hair color online, people who have never bought hair color online, uh, extremely experimental people. So currently there is a huge trend happening in, in the hair color space in terms of bright, vibrant colors. So, um, so you have the entire gamut of uh, audiences and uh, that's how we, we, are, we are really tapping into the different cohorts. Like I said earlier, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, they keep us on our toes, really, there. Yeah. So, like, going from one ad to now making for different cohorts, yeah. I think that's, that's been the change. Anyone else would like to add on? Or we'll move to the next question. Um, I think this one's open to all of you. Um, how do you see yourself future-proofing yourself to stay relevant? Uh, because, you know, it's not just about making one big moment catching their attention because you know the span of attention is like so how do you stay relevant throughout uh, and if you are future ready in terms of your strategies to stay in touch with Gen Z's I think we can start with you so um, I think the number one is we all have spoken about it but I think one is the relevancy to be relevant all the time and therefore you have to continuously innovate or continuously offer something which is uh, relevant at that point in time. Like uh, there are minications which are happening, there are staycations which are happening, therefore we coming up with a smaller uh, day packs or the smaller holiday bags, you know, that's why, that's how you stay relevant in terms of the product offering also and the communication also. Second thing is about uh, authenticity and a credibility that you have to have uh, you, whatever you're talking about, a brand promise and the values needs to be showcased and needs to be put up there so that they, and on a continuous basis. The third thing is about, uh, you know, being, uh, being there in a shorter format, you know, because, uh, and therefore all those teasers, which even I never would like to, you know, watch teasers, but nowadays I believe in teasers, therefore if at all they want to watch more, they can always go on a longer format. And uh, the lastly is today, even from the first standard, kids are, you know, uh, kids are taught about the social responsibility, inclusivity, diversity. They have a global warming subject in physics also, in geography also, you know, so therefore how in a future uh, we can have a lesser carbon footprints, uh, you know, and move to the sustainable product development. I think uh, this way we can be relevant uh, to the audience always. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add to what she said, right? I have a bit of a cheat code here. The, the way to stay uh, connected with Gen Z 
is to have a team which is Gen Z. <laughs> so, so that's what I do. My brand managers and you know my team is all Gen Z, and they explain me what is why Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. You know, I would never get it, right? So I think uh, you know it's it's. I mean, we all speak about it's important for us to walk in our customer shoes and you know be completely aware on their day life and uh, you know day in their life and be completely aware on their touch points. And I think all that is important. Uh, but unless uh, you know the team is really thinking, feeling. And doing what your cohort, which is Gen Z, are doing, you know, uh, you won't go far as a brand. So that that's my mantra. And the team, uh, is this on? Yeah. Sure. And uh, that's the thing. The, I think I I learn a lot from my team in terms of how to go about it. And and that you know, like like the Gen Z, the team is also pretty vocal. If they don't like a creative, and I've approved it, they'll say to my face, "No, Ravi, it's not going out." <laughs> and that's what I appreciate about them, right? So it's about uh, I mean, you know, you you have to have a team who really really walks the shoes and not just you know gather insights Things from a research or, or or you know just from a secondary thing you have to really be at it uh, i think just one last thing to that um, i think within gen z also of course they have different preferences they don't want to feel that you are spamming them right we are also evolving in terms of you know checking with each user would you like us to do a follow up consultation on call within that would you want it through call or through chat or you want us to not bother you at all what's your way of going about it and then truly personalizing the experience for them and even in terms of data privacy if you are asking for any data we are now starting to tell them why we are asking for it and exactly where it will be used and going through more and more opt-in models, making more and more things optional uh, in terms of what they are comfortable sharing or not. So, I mean, if you uh, see the Insta bio of any 20-year-old today, there will be three things written over there, right? There will be I'm advertising executive in the day, poet by night, <laughs> trekker, in my holidays, right? So if your consumer today has multiple personalities, does not want to be identified by one personality, as a brand, you cannot just have one conversation with the consumer. You need to have multiple conversations with the consumer. There has to be a many-me aspect to the brand as well, right? And they are very important. I mean, for example, if you look at water, we've got the sports marketing program going on called Carry Your Game. We've got Drink It Up going on, Hydration Fund. We've got Greener Promise, which is goes, going on for sustainability as well, right? Uh, we've got Abhisleri, Apne App Aiga for our digital footprint, right? So we are having four different conversations with the consumers on four topics relevant to them, right? And you've got to keep them engaging. And what is also important today is that in the moment marketing, right? It's extremely important to take because this is a work audience. This is an audience which is on digital, Twitter, Insta every day. You need to be hyper local with your approach, right? I mean, we do about 12 to 15 limited editions a year. Whichever movie, uh, you know, sort of kind of resonates with us. We've done from Jawan to Ekta Tiger. Now we've done Dunki. We've done Fighter. We've done RRR. We've done Vikram, Jailer. All of these limited edition short bursts have got us a lot of traction, especially with the Gen Z audience who've spoken about it, right? So as a brand, you need to have multiple and exciting communication with your consumers, and that's going to bear rich fruits to everyone. Okay. I think um, that gets us to a close. Um, what I understand from and what my takeaways from today's discussion are that Gen Z is not taking any bullshit. They're making you work for uh, their worth. And uh, it's also the most purpose-driven uh, generation, right? More than millennials and boomers have ever been because that's their point of focus. Uh, it was different for millennials, different for boomers. For Gen Z, it's more about getting their worth, more being more purpose-driven. And they sort of expect brands to do the same, right? They, I don't think y'all like being sold to, so I'm not going to sell this panel also. but. Uh, I think that's what uh, is, is one of the key takeaways, that they want to be co-creators, involve them in it, make them feel that they are part of the process of creating, um, bringing about that change, even in terms of sustainability, even in terms of you know, the measures that you're taking to reduce the carbon footprint, et cetera. I think that's um, very key. And I think if we all in the room think that marketing changed when millennials became the target audience, um, I think Gen Z is in, <laughs> it's giving us a tough time. So I think that's going to be worth it when we get out towards the end of it. Closing that for today, thank you so much for being a lovely audience. Thank you so much for being a lovely panel. <laughs>